It's good to see everyone this evening. Appreciate your uh, being here. I know uh, a lot of other places you could be, and many of you put in a long day, and uh, perhaps temptation to stay at home, just kick back your heels and relax, but certainly this is the best place to be, fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters in Christ and studying God's Word together. I want to talk about accountability for just a moment this evening, just give you some food for thought. And I suppose accountability is a word we don't really like to think about, and it's not one that we uh, perhaps use a lot in everyday conversation, but if you look up the word accountability, you'll find it defined, the fact or condition of being accountable. Now, I needed a dictionary for that, right? So I thought, okay, I'm going to look up the word accountable and see what it says. The word accountable means the expectation to justify one's actions or decisions. We know what accountability is. I mean, think about it. Even as a child, how many times did you get called in and, and, and by mom or dad, you know, something is broken, something has happened, and, and mom says, what do you know about this? And you probably said, who, me? Or if you had a sibling, uh, did, you, did you ask brother? <laughs> did, did you ask sister? Accountability to answer for something that's happened. And I suppose everyone who's old enough to have a job understands the principle of accountability because the older you become, uh, you know, past grade school, the early teen years, the more we understand what accountability is all about. You know, For example, if you sell car parts, you are expected, you are accountable to sell parts. If you are a school teacher, you are accountable to the school board the principal, the superintendent, whoever. But there is accountability there. If you fly airplanes for an airline, you are accountable to your employer. Whatever your job is, there is some sort of accountability. I heard about the CEO of a company. He was talking to his employees. And he was saying everybody is accountable to somebody. And one of his employees came up and said, you're not accountable to anybody. You own the company. He said, I'm accountable to my wife. And so I guess that we all are accountable to someone at some point down the line. But, but even preachers are accountable to the elders, or if there are no elders, preachers are accountable to the congregation. And we understand that accountability carries with it some consequences. Ned, are you out there somewhere? Yeah. Ned sells bulldozer par or bulldozers and parts and road graders. If Ned doesn't sell any bulldozers for the next two years, I dare say he's going to be in the employment office. Because they're going to call him in. Ned, why aren't you selling any equipment? And others, you know, whether you teach school, if you're not teaching your students, they're going to call you in. They're going to say, hey, look, what's going on? You're not doing your job. And, and that could apply to whatever you do, whether you build houses, whether you sell car parts, whatever you do, you're expected to carry out whatever job, whatever responsibility you've been given. You know, we find an example of accountability in Matthew chapter 25, beginning in verse 14, if you want to turn there in your Bibles. And by the way, I took a minute to, to look on the computer uh, concordance program. You don't find the word accountability in the Scriptures. You don't find the word accountable in the Scriptures, at least not in the King James, the New King James, the American Standard. Maybe some of the modern speech translations do. But I would suggest to you that the principle of accountability is there all throughout the Word of God, not only the New Testament, but even in the Old Testament. But look at Matthew chapter 25. I want to begin reading about verse 14 down through the end of the chapter. Matthew 25, beginning with verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered them his goods. And into one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And straightway he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them five other talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dug in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, 
Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I had not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, one translation says bankers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and unto him have abundance, but from him that hath Back, excuse me, let me start over verse 29. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And then in verse 30, notice the verdict on the one talent man. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Notice there were three servants here, and they were all given talents. One was given five, one was given two, one was given one. The five-talent man doubled his. Now, we're not told how he did it, but he doubled. The two-talent man doubled what he had been given, but the one-talent man went and dug in the earth. He said he was afraid. Maybe he was fearful of the markets, you know, didn't know what was going to happen, afraid he would lose what he did have. So he buried it in the earth. He digs it up when the master returns and says, Here, you, you got back what you gave me. And his master rebuked him and said, you could have at least put my money in the bank and I would have gotten it back plus interest. And this one talent man was condemned. The point is, there was accountability. These three individuals, these three servants were given certain talents, certain blessings. And from what is given in the text, they understood it was still the master's money. It's referred as his money. They were expected to use it and there would be an answering for what they did with it. And notice the first two were called good and faithful servant, verse 21 and 23. But then notice what the one talent man is called there. He's called a wicked and slothful servant. No commendation. He's not told, that, well, you were wise. You were cautious investor. No. Wicked and slothful servant. You know, the New Testament clearly teaches that we're all accountable to God for our lives, how we live, what we do, how we use the gifts and the blessings that we have, the time that we have. But not only that, we're told that we're going to stand before God. In fact, you begin reading what we left off there in verse 30. Begin reading in verse 31, and Jesus describes the days of reckoning or this day of accountability. All nations, he said, are going to stand before him, verse 32. And from this accountability, we usually refer to it as the judgment, but from this accounting, we're going to go either to one of two places. Those on the right hand are going to be invited into that heavenly home, verse 34. Those on the left hand, the goats, are going to be turned away into eternal punishment, verse 41. And there are many other passages that talk about this accountability to God, this accountability for all the things that we have been given. We need to keep in mind that we are going to stand before God one day and we're going to answer and so the question I leave you with as we close is, where are you going to be? Where will you be standing in this day of accountability? With the goats on the one hand? Or will you be with the sheep on the other hand? It's not a matter of what you've been given. It's not enough to say, well, you know, Tony or Mark or whoever, they've been given more than I have. I can't do what they can do. No. This reckoning, this accountability was based on what? On what they had been given. The one talent man wasn't condemned because he didn't do as much as the five talent or he didn't do as much as the two. He was condemned because he did not use what he had been given. And so it matters not what you have, what your abilities, what your talents, what your opportunities are. That's not going to matter. But God is going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? And what will you say? Tonight, if you're outside of Christ, if you're not a member of his body, the church, you have the opportunity to become a Christian, coming in faith, repenting, turning from your sins, confessing his name, that he is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, that he wants to be your Savior. Be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins and let him add you to his body, the church, so that you can be a child of God, so that you can be on the right hand in this day of reckoning.
If you're subject to the invitation of Christ tonight, if you want to become a Christian or perhaps you need to come back and be restored as a wayward Christian, you can do that as well. But if you need to respond to heaven's invitation, will you come while we stand and we sing?